so we're pretty much done to death on all our little zones here. We've done DMZ to web, we've done DMZ to inside, we've done web to app database management, and so on. What remains now is to think, is to go back to our zone map again, go app to data, we've done that, app to inside, done that, app to management, app to, app to web, data to, data to, and so on. DMZ2, yeah. Management2, yeah. Web2, okay. <clears throat> We've done all of those. We do, however, have this inside2 and outside2 remaining. So we have the converse of we went from here to here to here, you know, we went from these to all the others. So Again, you would list it all out like I've done here, probably in Excel or something like this, or in PowerPoint, or write it in a book, but you'd get it all laid out so that you know what you have left to do and tick them off as you go along. I know that we've got inside two left to do, so we're gonna set firewall name inside two DMZ. So we've got to allow these networks into our network. We have allowed it from, the, you know, DMZ to inside we allowed to the group. We now want to allow that group to have access from inside to the DMZ through our router. Um, let's give this a description of exactly that. And this is going to be... Um, Soft layer private network groups access or allowed traffic allowed to the DMZ. Bit more descriptive. After description, what's the rule? Well, rule 100 action accept, and that's on a destination. No, it's not in a destination, because this isn't the destination. The destination was on the DMZ to the inside. This is on the source. So we're going to say a source rule here, so that if the source of the traffic into the DMZ isn't from the inside, just ignore it. So we're going to say source group is the network group, and that's the SL private group that we defined. And we're going to commit that. So that's inside to... Oh, it failed. Commit failed. Ah. See, that's good that you've seen an error here on the typing. It would fail because this is sl underscore private. So because I had minus, I'm going to just del that. And then I'm going to set it again, but with underscore. And I'm going to commit that. And we can run a show firewall. And the one we want to look at is inside to DMZ. So app to data, app to management, app to web. Let's get down to the eyes. I missed it. I was too heavy handed with my space bar. Inside to DMZ. Inside to DMZ. Match on SL private source. That's exactly what we want to see at this end here. So that's fine. It took that rule. Okay. So we now want to do inside to the web. So in a similar vein, we want to allow those private networks into the web. So I'm gonna bring, oh, might as well just type it, set, um, firewall, name, inside to web. Default action will be drop. Description will be 
soft layer private network group traffic allowed to the web zone. The rule, the rule is going to be, this is as dry as watching paint, or this is as, you know, slow as watching paint dry. Action accept, but it is what you have to do, just to go through. Um, this time it's going to be source, remember, group, network group, SL, oops, I've done it again, underscore, private, commit, perfect. Next up, we've only got a few left now inside the app. We need to cover that. So set firewall name inside to app. Default action is drop. Description is soft layer private whoops private network group traffic allowed to the application zone. The rule exactly as we've had before. And it's a source rule for the group, the network group that is defined as SL underscore private. Committed. Excellent. Inside to data. Don't hit return by accident. Make sure you put a source rule afterwards. Okay, inside to data is done. Now I might as well do a save as well. To make sure we got it. So inside to management, we're almost there. Inside to manage nunt, manage nunt. Description is going to be to the management. Well, Management zone. I'm going to whip around here, change this to management. Lovely rule 100 action. Oh, I've done a double A action. Accept source group. Network group SL underscore private. Commit that one. Okay. So we now are left with, well, let's have a look at our map. Let's have a look at our map. Where is it gone? There it is. What have we got left? I don't remember starting anything with outside or local. So we can double check this. We can go in and do a show, whoops, uh, run show firewall. Have we got anything that begins? We've got app to data. So I tell you what, if we check these off, we have app to data. We have app to inside. We have app to management. 
We have app to web. We have data to app. That's that one up there. We have data to inside. Data to inside. Data to management. Data to web. DMZ to inside. DMZ to inside. DMZ to web. Inside to app. Yep. Inside to DMZ. Inside to management. Inside to web. Management to app. I still haven't seen an outside to web or an outside to local. Or indeed local to outside. Management, 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 web to data. Inside web to management. Okay, yeah, I've definitely not seen an outside to web. So I think that's what we've got left. I would obviously spend far longer checking that out and double checking it. But for the purposes of this video, let's whack in the local room. So this is traffic from the router pair. So local is the router itself. So we're going to say set firewall name local to outside. So what sort of traffic is that going to be? Well, it's going to be the one that we set up at the very start of all of this in the baselining section, which is going to be SSH. So we're going to allow SSH and we're going to allow ping. That's all we're going to allow from the local, from the router itself to the outside world. That's all we're going to allow. So set firewall name local to outside and the default action as always is drop. The description is going to be um, vRouter traffic allowed to the interweb. The next one is going to be our rule. So rule 100 action accept rule 100 destination port. So what are we allowing in terms of its destination? Well, we're going to allow 22272. Rule 200, so we'll have a second rule, action accept, and this one is going to say protocol ICMP. So we're going to allow P. I'm going to commit that. Whoops. Okay. We must give it a protocol. So set firewall rule 100 that will be. Protocol TCP. I could spell. Okay, I think we're okay there now. Um, let me just make doubly sure by running that this command again. Already exists, that's fine. Yep. <clears throat> so it's in there now and it's accepted and it's allowed. Um, so we're good on that one. And it does mean I need to update my rule sets as well when I make sure to put that in my PowerPoint. Okay. Um, next up is going to be the outside to our web. So from the outside to our web. So we're going to, normally you wouldn't allow that um, because you're coming through the DMZ and the DMZ is where you'd probably put things like your proxy. But for the purposes of this, I just want to show that we're allowing direct access to web servers on the private web VLAN. Yeah. So we're going to set 
uh, firewall name outside to whoops to web and the default action will be drop the description is going to be uh, internet internet traffic allowed to the web zone the rule on this action accept destination port 25 mail we're going to allow mail through um, protocol TCP better put that in as we learned a second ago we're gonna have a second rule action allow oh, action allowed action I got that in my mind now action allowed action accept uh, destination port well what are you allowed through to the web port 80 protocol TCP underscore UDP then we're going to have a final rule 300 action accept and this one's for 443 destination port whoops 443 so we can have SSH coming through and we're going to say protocol TCP UDP commit done okay so I think we're pretty much there now the only one is the outside to the router itself okay the converse of the local to outside that we just did a second ago so set firewall name outside to locale default is drop description it's going to be internet traffic whoops traffic allowed to the the router what's the rule well the rule is going to be action drop I'm going to drop everything in a row. No, I'm not. I'm going to allow it. Or else it won't get through. Of course I am. Um, what am I going to accept? Well, I'm going to accept destination port 22272. That's what we made it protocol for that because we better put that in or else I'll get error messages is going to be TCP UDP um, we're gonna say log enable because we want to actually see the logging um, actually thinking about it we only want to I'm just gonna delete this one we only want to allow TCP I want to be careful with this one. Sorry about that. I'm only going to allow TCP. Um, we also now want to deal with uh, floods and people flooding the SSH, even if they, well, should they guess the 22272, um, which would be unlikely, but even still, we only want, we want to protect SSH sessions from getting a flood of them coming in. So we're going to add to this rule and say recent count three, recent time 30. So in the last 30 minutes, three, three attempts, links, connections. 
Um, we're going to say state new enable. And then you want to have another rule of action accept. And this is going to be on protocol ICMP. So the two things we're allowing are 22272. We're logging all those connections. That's what we want to do. We're allowing TCP on that port and we're monitoring and only allowing three connections at a time. And then we're allowing ping. And that's all we're allowing to come into this router. And that is all our firewall rules. I think that pretty much covers every one of them. I may have left the odd one out there because I'm just videoing this in our lab, but hopefully we'll uncover that when we come to part eight in a minute, which will be setting up the actual uh, rules themselves, as in making the rules happen between our zones. Because at the moment, again, just going back to this one again, here's our public um, ping through. Time out, time out, yes. There you go. So everything is still there, and when we did the show, run, show, firewall, um, oh, if I could type, it's inactive, not applied, see? We've not applied this to any of the interfaces or any of the zones. So we still have no firewall at the moment, and that's fine, because part eight, we're gonna make our firewall happen. After all this time, and it's been a journey, join me in part eight when we'll actually make our firewall active. We're almost there. We are really close now to having all of our firewall set up. So we know on our north side here, we can do a show firewall and there they are. We've done a lot of work. We've been at this now, what, 40 minutes um, to set up all of these firewalls. And it's not over yet because, of course, we've only done the north side. If I go down here and I do a show firewall, yep, we've got no rules other than the global state policies that we set. So this is a conundrum. We have a problem. Well, we don't have a problem. We have a lot of work ahead. We've got another 20, 25, 30 minutes of writing in all of these lines and making sure that we don't accidentally spell something wrong or do something slightly wrong in which case we will blow our entire um, VRRP configuration from the point of view that just won't fail over if we type it in wrong. Um, so what can we do? Well you can with the fully licensed version on software synchronize these machines and set up a, a group, a synchronization set of rules that will keep these machines in lockstep. That's not available on VYOS, uh, certainly as far as I can see. There are some open source synchronization tools out there that you can use. Um, and by all means, go to the VYOS uh, community site and you will find um, people have written tools to do this. I have another way of doing it that I wanted to show you uh, quickly here in GNS3 in this um, tutorial. And it revolves around the wondrous command called show configuration command, which is another great command to know to learn how to use um, VYOS. So even on software, this command is wonderful because what it does is it lists out all of the commands that will be run to configure the machine. And as you can see here, here's all our firewalls. Here they are all the rules that we typed in, everything. So we know we have an exact copy. And at the end of the day, this is a Linux machine. So if we run that command and we output it to slash tum, slash tum slash my cmds, say. We now have a copy of all of the commands that we've run on this machine on slash tump slash my commands. So we want to copy that over here. Now we've set up 
SSH on port 22272. So this is a good double check for that as well. So down on the south side, I am going to go to CD slash tool. I am going to go um, S, well, I'll tell you what, let's SSH in first, uh, minus port 22272. And we're going to go to Zeus at 159.10.12.100. So we're going to SSH in, just make sure we can do it. The usual authentication thing. And you'll get this error. Fail to add host to the list of known hosts. So why is that? Why, why, why won't it write it to my home directory? You know, who am I? We're Zeus. That's Zeus's home directory. What's going on? Well, what I found, and I don't know why it does this, when we created the user um, Zeus, if you go to home and you do an ls minus al, everything's owned by user 1001, not by Zeus. And if I do a more slash etc slash uh, group, where is Zeus? Well, I do not want to go into edit mode. Oops, where is Zeus? I can't see Zeus at all in here. Well, certainly so far I can't see Zeus. No, can't see it at all. So, that presents a conundrum. For us, we can't write to this file. So what did I do? Well, I mean, it is Linux after all. So what I'm going to do is cd dot dot. I can see there, and my apologies that this comes up in blue, but there is two directories, vyos and Zeus. Maybe if I do it that way, you can see one of them is user 1000, one of them is user 1001. Um, what I'm going to do is get to root. So how do you get to root on this machine? Well, you simply do a sudo su. We are now root. Plain, old, ordinary root. Um, super user on a Linux machine. And now we can do a chown minus r Zeus for Zeus. I'll exit out of root. Now I'm going to go back to slash tum. Now we have the right to write to that file. I'm arrowing up, I'm going to SSH over. We're going to say yes. This time we get it permanently added. We don't get that failure. So it's good for you to see that as well. Give it a couple of seconds. I don't know why it's taking so long for uh, the port to actually respond. Um, I've had this quite a few times when I use you know, um, emulation like this. Um, but eventually, there you go. Greek gods, and we're in. cd slash tum, ls, and there's our my commands. That's what we want. We want my commands. So I'm going to exit out of here. And now I am back on lon02. I'm going to issue the same command again, but scp and up this end, slash tum, slash my, whoops, my commands to dot. Oh, and the connection's refused. So it doesn't like it. It's trying to connect on port 22. So now we need to fix getting SCP working. We fix this. SCP issue. Well, amazingly with Linux, um, would you believe it's uppercase P to designate the port for SCP, not lowercase like SSH. And that will eventually, like we had a minute ago, come back to us with the password hopefully. Greek gods, and there we have it. Lovely. So we have our file. 
my commands. Now we can VI my CMDS. I want to get rid of all of this. Um, let me put it back. To, I'll tell you what. Let me quit out of that and be a bit more careful here. So we want to get rid of this. Yep. 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 Right. We want to keep all of the grouping because that was a set of commands that we ran. All of these commands, the group, we want to get rid of this, 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 this. And here's our app to data, app to management, app to inside, data to app, data to inside. All of these we want to keep running all the way down web to app, web to data okay get rid of these because these we've already done but you can see now how you could modify this entire file to have what you want to have all our vifs I'm just going to go down here a bit. We want to keep all our firewall rules, but we want to get rid of all of these. This gives me more view on everything. All the contract rules that we set up earlier, all the login rules, all the time zones, everything was there. Right, there we have it. So we've got our group at the very top here, and then we've got all our firewall rules. I'm just going to WQ that one. Now, so now we want, we've got that file exactly where we want it. Um, my minus CMDS, we've edited it, and we're happy with this. So we want to run these commands. Well, um, if I quit out of here, but First of all, I want to move it my to um, my cmds .show. We want to turn it into a shell script, and we want to vi my cmds .sh. And at the very top of the file, we want to have our usual shebang, but this time it's bin slash v bash and we want to source slash opt slash viada slash etc slash functions slash script minus template then we want to hit a configure as if we were typing at the end and right down the end of the file do a shift G to go to the end. We want to do a commit. Okay, hopefully, hopefully this will work. Ah, oh, good old Linux. Right. It took a bit of running, took a bit of time, but it's finished now. It's come back to me as you can see here. Um, let's see. Show firewall. We have app to data, app to management, data to app, data, and, and there you go. They're all there. So that's the little shortcut way of syncing up your two machines. Now you could see how you could write. Um, a chef recipe maybe or a pop-up um, manifest to do this sort of thing you could see how you could get these things in sync by simply using a little bit of scripting like that we have now got our second machine up to the same uh, spec as the original machine there is one thing we do need to do though we need to do a save whoops um, if I go into config mode and then do a save or else we'll have lost all of that. 
So we are now happy that we have our firewalls across our two machines. They're all there and we are ready to go with enabling our actual firewalls. Join me for part eight where we will actually get to enable these firewalls. Thanks very much.